Yo, have you heard about Anchor? It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast NFL Edition. We are here, Super Bowl week. We got the expert, Justin Akenda, with us. How are you doing today, sir? Super Bowl week. I'm doing well, man. We made it here, man. We made it all the way since September. We made it to February. What is it going to be? February 7th. Let's get it. Hey, you and I both said... The one league that will go start to finish regular season on time and all would be the NFL. And they're about to do it again, man. Didn't even miss a game either. So obviously we're going to be talking about the Super Bowl today. uh, The Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. But before we deep dive into that game, there's some NFL news that we want to go over. And (laughs) the first thing is the Matt Stafford trade. Uh, Matt Stafford was traded to the Rams, and this kind of shocked me personally. For Jared Goff, a 2021 third round pick, 2022 first round pick, and 2023 first round pick. Justin, you did the research that this is the first exchange of number one picks in a common draft era since 1967, which is ways, ways back. So, Justin, first, Were you shocked by this trade that it was Stafford to the Rams? And what does this do for both teams going forward? Yeah, I knew Stafford was going somewhere. I didn't think it was going to be this early and to the Rams because the Rams had um, Jared Goff sign long term and they were paying them a lot of money. But they were able to pull it off. And I personally like the move for the Rams. I like it for both teams, really. The Lions got a lot out of the trade. They got two first round picks out of it. And the Rams got rid of Jared Goff, so it sounds like a win-win trade if you ask me. What what led to Jared Goff being on the trade block? If you do remember that first year when they went to the Super Bowl, and then ever since then, people have been doubting his abilities until it got to this year. And what led to him being on the trade block? Well, we saw everything we need to know in the Rams playoff game where John Wolford got hurt and Jared Goff came into play because if you're the number one guy, if you're the man, you would have started that game even with your hurt shoulder. So I think Sean McVay was done with him. I saw Adam Shefford basically tweet that they were, that um, basically McVay was done with him. That it was like, yeah, put everything on me. Like this is basically my decision. I wanted them out type of thing. So he thought that he thought that he reached this, the biggest ceiling he could with Goff and had to upgrade. It was essentially what happened. With the Rams organization, or me personally, they're starting to look a little inadequate because they paid Todd Gurley a whole bunch of money, then they shipped him. And now they paid Jared Goff a ton of money, and now they shipped him. And you even did the research, too, that the Rams aren't going to have a first one first round pick for a while? Yeah, they haven't had a first-round pick since they drafted, drafted Jared Goff. But they yeah, traded up to get him, right? Yeah, they traded up. Had- yeah, they traded up to get them. They traded their 27, 2017 pick to the Titans. I forget what trade was that was for. Traded another one to 18. In 18, they traded the pick to the Patriots. 19, they traded, they traded the pick to the Falcons. That was the girly trade. 2020, the Jaguars. That was Ramsey. And then 2021, that was Ramsey. And then they traded 22 and 23 to the Lions. So, I mean... They still got one of the best rosters in the league, even with all the trades. I guess they have just decided that they do not need first round picks. And I mean, they made it to the playoffs this year. They missed it last year, but made it the Super Bowl the year before. So 
it seems like they know what they're doing. I, I'm not going to criticize it too much. I, I definitely thought, think they needed a new quarterback because Jared Goff ain't it. So, But a couple of weeks before the season, at the point of the season, you had them as a Super Bowl pick with Jared Goff as quarterback. I did, and then he started playing like shit. I mean, he was he was a reason why they didn't make it to the Super Bowl. It was him. So, yeah, I, I like it. Stafford's definitely a great player. He was in. He was with the Detroit Lions for all these years. I mean, Stafford, Stafford's the man. He was played with twelve seasons with the Lions, sixty-two percent passing, four thousand one hundred nine yards, two hundred eighty-two touchdowns, one hundred and forty-four interceptions. Made the playoffs three times. He lost all three games. He's thrown for 4,000 yards in eight seasons. And he was NFL comeback player of the year in 2011 with 5,038 yards, 41 touchdowns. You know, he started 136 games, six all time until um, 2019. And we um, broke his back and then started every game in 2020. 31 game win, 31 game win drives, 31 comebacks. I think they got someone who they can um, win with in the LA with. Um, Matt Stafford. Yeah, I, I agree that they they upgrade. It's just paying him all that money just to ship him. Like, that, I mean, that's why they had to. That's why they had to give the, the Lions another second round pick. I mean, another first round pick to take the take the for taking the contract. That's why it was two because Jared Goff ain't worth two first round picks. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, Stafford ain't worth two first round picks. They they had to send over the Rams had to send over an extra pick so. The, so the Lions took Jared Goff's contract. What does this do with the Lions and Jared Goff going forward? Do they see him as the current slash the future? Are they going to be looking for a quarterback in the draft? What are they doing? Jared Goff gives them time. They can draft the quarter. They can draft the quarterback in this draft. Next draft, they're not going to be very good. So their picks will be high next year. So uh, there, there's a rebuilding year, and Jared Goff. He's um he's gonna be there at least next year because he's owed a lot of money. So yeah, they're just gonna run it with Jared Goff and see how it goes. But yeah, their lines are definitely rebuilt. I don't expect much out of them next year at all. Okay. Speaking of quarterbacks on the move, where well, they still still. Uh Deshaun Watson, he still wants to be traded. It's been a little bit since we talked about him and the recent stuff that's come out. He personally has not said it publicly. He removed all the text and stuff from his social media. And I have seen multiple people talking about the Dolphins, uh, the Jets. Recently, the Raiders have come up, uh, potentially shipping Derek Carr. I've also heard people talk about shipping Jimmy Garoppolo over there to Houston. But Houston had their head coach, and he had his press conference, and they said that Deshaun Watson is going to be playing for the Houston Texans. So, Justin, how how is this Deshaun? Like, what's the latest on this update, like, on him? So, the latest with Deshaun Watson is this week he has removed all Texans stuff off his social media. Mm -hmm. So, he's just, you know, on Twitter, NFL player. Has not mentioned Texans. So, I think Deshaun Watson is out. I don't think he wants to play there. He's, He's completely done with him at this point. I was listening around you no know, different podcasts that I listen to and stuff. And the real insiders were basically saying that, yeah, Deshaun Watson's the principal man. He's willing to sit out and sit out for what he believes in. Like he's already made enough money to where he can sit out. So it's, it's looking like he's going to have to sit out to get what he wants and get traded. Cause the Texans, like you said, said they're not trading them. So they don't want to, they haven't been listening to the offer. So it's going, it's going to come down to Deshaun Watson sitting out and losing some money. Now, with Deshaun Watson working for requesting for a trade, did this all stem from the owner telling him that he was going to be in the GM coaching hiring process and then not? Or has this been brewing for a while since the DeAndre Hopkins trade, uh, Bill O'Brien leaving? Or has is, is it been brewing or is this just exploded recently? I definitely think it's been brewing. I think the first... I think the first um, red flag was when they traded DeAndre Hopkins, and then after the owner lied to him in November, that was the final straw. So it's definitely been brewing all of 2020. But like I said, when we first introduced the story, he signed with them over the summer. So yeah. he is he is locked in. But I, I, just think, I just think the year of just being so bad, there, there's something in there that just isn't right. And I, I think Deshaun Watson 
is done there. I don't think he's going to sue it for the Texans again. Yeah, and then people have all obviously come out with their comments. The two biggest ones of this week were uh, Brett Favre, who we know Hall of Fame quarterback, Green Bay Packers, Super Bowl champion. He came out and said this about Deshaun Watson's trade request that you get paid a ton of money to do a certain job and just do it and let the chips fall where they may. I think we make way too much money to voice an opinion, but I'm not saying he's wrong. Again, I think it's a different day and time. They'll be interested to see how the organization handles itself. When you first heard Favre's comments, what did you think? I was thinking, God, Brett Favre, I love when you play the football, but you just shouldn't open your mouth about these type of topics. After what he did to the Green Bay Packers when he, you know, retired, then unretired, then retired again, like he got, he has no room to criticize Deshaun Watson for wanting out of Houston and voicing his opinion. And because these NFL players make a lot of money, they shouldn't have an opinion that is pish posh. You're basically saying every rich man ever shouldn't speak his mind up. So that's, that's bullshit if you ask me. Yeah, that, that was just really dissecting it. That's a very interesting thing that he said about we make way too much money because the people who make way too much money are the ones who make the decisions on this planet anyway so that was interesting to me and you already brought up his drama queen situation with green bay retiring Mm -hmm. unretiring so that that's the thing too the only thing i would agree with like this is a different day and time not that i felt like barb was actually one of one of the first people to really demand his way out things like that even if you go back to with eli manning uh not wanting to play <laughs> at certain plays but that, I, I was just confused by that and Farb is a guy where he doesn't even come out as much like i know he has a sponsorship and stuff where they're like hey it's super bowl week go out there talk but this wasn't a subject that he should have talked about i have agreed with far about the aaron Rodgers stuff because anyone who knows that situation would be him because he was almost in the same situation what do you say about aaron Nuffer? Uh, that I mean, there's no way he's going he's leaving uh green bay and like how the organization how they draft and stuff and you know how when Favre was still contending for super bowls and stuff like that they drafted aaron but aaron fell to them and obviously the difference is Green Bay moved up to get Jordan Love. We just talked about the organization situation, which he almost went through the exact same thing. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is not going anywhere. No. Even though, did you see that after that championship game, people were, he was talking about whatever his fans were saying he should leave or he was asking for more money now. Have you, did you see that stuff? Yeah, that that is ridiculous. Someone was someone was trying to say that he should hold the Green Bay Packers hostage to get out of there. Like you just made it to the NFC Championship game two years in a row. Do better, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and oh, and someone said the money issue is because he was tied for fourth with Jared Goff. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I should be paid. I should be getting a lot more paid than that guy. So. Now, now I can't I can't feel some type of way about that. I'm Aaron Rodgers and Jared Goff is making the same or more money than me. I will feel some type of way, but like. Aaron Rodgers is a smart guy. He gets the NFL business. He gets that, like, you know, mm-hmm. if we pay you $50 million a year, we ain't going to be able to pay Devontae Adams. We, Aaron Jones is already going to be a free agent, but they already have two running backs, so they'll be fine yep. there. But, yeah, Aaron Rodgers ain't getting the new contract. You know, this, this was the one that got me with uh, Dick Vermeil. He had two comments. He had one with TMZ, and then he had one that was talked about on ESPN this week. The first one with PMZ was, I think they changed his diapers, okay? Nowhere in his contract does it say that he's involved in making the decisions of who coaches or who leads the organization. He's a great NFL football player and always has been a great kid, but I think he just shuts his mouth and becomes a better football player and lead the football team and let the leaders of the organization lead him. That was his first one on TMZ. The next, the next one. That was funny. He said, I'm a little disappointed to be honest with you because you know the image that he 
has presented coming out of college and through the draft and through his career so far in Houston has been so positive. I don't think that his approach really reflects what he has presented over the past few years, so I'm disappointed. I just don't think that anybody, whether it be the football team or the other 31 football teams, start allowing players to step in and make decisions on who runs them, who coaches them, and all of those kind of things. If you want to make all if you want to make all the decisions as an owner, then go buy your own team. And that was the quote that was on the ESPN one. They didn't have to. So what do you think of those ones? Well, first of all, Dick Vermeil, you can't afford an NFL team either. So <laughs> there's that. And he sounds he sounds ridiculous just because the man is, you know, he has even like publicly said that, yeah, I want out. He's not even like acting a fool that, you know, James Harden, you know, he came, same situation, same shitty. He came to training camp fat. Bad. Yeah. Bad. And and if you're watching those Houston Rocket games, he clearly wasn't trying. Deshaun Watson last year, you saw that shit team. They only won four games. Deshaun Watson was killing it. So him trying to question Deshaun Watson's character is, you know, kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's just like, you know, who the hell are you to say, say all this? And, you know, it would it would be one thing if you know Deshaun Watson, you know, said like I want I want a hand in this, like I want to be picking people and all that all that shit. But like the team said, we're gonna let you in on this, and then they and then they backed out, backtracked on, and hired someone that he didn't have any input in. So if they wouldn't have said that, this probably wouldn't be a big issue. So I blame the Texans for you know setting the expectations high and then not delivering on them. Honestly, yeah, and a lot of people that we've spoke on previous podcasts. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Andre Johnson, like they've talked about the Texans organization and how obviously there's some things going on with that McNair family running it. But I just feel like where is Deshaun's his fans at? Not like normal people, but where's Dabo Sweeney? Like, why is he not coming? This is Dabo Sweeney is the same man who said Deshaun Watson was the Michael Jordan of college football and that he was going to become that in the NFL. So where are you at to defend one of your best? He got you your first national championship. Where are you to come defend him? Like I've been waiting for Dabo to say something because Lord knows he was running his mouth all fall. But now when his players getting attacked by Favre and Mellon, any of these other people, he should have been one of the top people to defend him. And he's been, I mean, he hasn't said a word. To, to, to counter that, when the Desha- well, actually no, it's not even, it's not even the same thing. Deshaun Watson is actually good. I was about to say Urban Meyer ain't really speak out when Dwayne Haskins was acting up, but Desha- Dwayne Haskins was acting up, and Urban Meyer was on record saying that he's probably not ready to be in the NFL right now. So, nah, yep. yeah, yeah. Where is that, Bo Sweeney? You talk all this shit about your players mm-hmm. in college. You should be the thing of them all the time. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. It's funny. I, I don't know. I don't really don't know where he's been. He's been. Uh, he's been real quiet since that beatdown, but <laughs> this is his guy. He would not have a national championship without this guy. Yeah, but I mean, so, Trevor Lawrence probably doesn't go to Clemson if Sean Watson no. isn't there. You know, he doesn't win national championship. You know, though the players like him, you know, they they get high school kids who want to go to your school, and that's facts. Yeah, so now I think we're also the first people who. Ask where Dabo Sweeney is at and all. To oh, yeah. Be we, honest. Oh, yeah. I have not heard that before. <laughs> That's good. But wh- where are you thinking he's going, man? Because if Stafford got what he got for that trade. Let, 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 me, stop, let, let me stop you right there. Deshaun Watson, Stafford not, is not the same thing. Stafford getting traded for two picks was only because the – only because the Rams wanted to get rid of Jared Goff. Stafford, just regular on the open market, is one first-round pick. But So are we really talking four minimum for Watson? Four first rounds? I think, it, I think it's four. Yeah, every, all the scouts that I listened to, they said it is going to be four first-rounders. And the, and the interesting thing that I read about the Raiders this week is, like, they were trying this. They're, the newspaper that I read and said that, like, if they can trade Jared um, Derek Carr, Derek Carr, and get two first rounders, which I don't think they'll get two first rounders for Derek Carr. But that's another thing. Trade him for two first rounders. They can package that another first round pick, you know, two of their own that they already have, and then probably a player. And then, yeah, that's the move. But 
you got to understand, Deshaun Watson is a franchise quarterback, 25 years old. You get, you're going to get 10 good years out of barring injury. So, yeah, he's, he's worth it for a first round. I think so. So who is, because we we don't know how this is going to end, who is willing to pay for a first round pick? If the Raiders did it, would that put them, I feel like if you're trading for him, you have to be in title contention. Would that put them over the top to compete with their division? Because you look at their division, man, they, they got some quarterbacks, obviously Patrick, and then you got Justin Herbert, who has had a phenomenal rookie year. Would Deshaun Watson put the Raiders wild card potential AFC championship contention for the next foreseeable future? I definitely think I definitely think if he went to the Raiders, it'd definitely be a playoff contender. Definitely wild card. Their defense is god awful though, so that will be kind of a struggle if he gets traded to Oak. I mean, the Las Vegas. I see a similar situation that was in Houston. You know, bad defense, um, lackluster offense. So, yeah, I think they'll be a wild card team, but simply because John Gruden and Deshaun Watson are carrying that team, it'll be Deshaun Watson lighting people up and throwing for 350 yards a game and running around. So it'd be almost Houston all over again, potentially. Yeah, the spot they really need to go, really should be hammering the go-to is um, San Francisco. He needs to be, in the, be with the 49ers because if they get him, it was a wrap. He needs to get out the AFC. If I'm him, he has a no trade cost, so he does have a little bit of leverage. If I'm him, I'm saying trade me somewhere in the NFC because right now it's, it's not as top heavy or deep as the AFC right now. So if I'm him, I'm trying to go to the NFC, San Francisco, maybe uh, Carolina Panthers, something. Well, teams along those lines. I don't think San Francisco would do because I've seen rumors that it's with the San Francisco they want their two top best defensive players. They're not trading Bosa. Yeah, I don't see him. I don't see him trading Bosa either. Carolina's a good one. I don't hear a lot of people talk about Carolina. Him and McCaffrey, I think they can do some things. And even under what were they six and ten this year? Yeah, they're they're six and ten. They're they're decent. Their defense is getting their way up. But you plug in Deshaun Watson on that offense, watch out because they can they can light it up. They really can, especially in an NFC South that changing. Obviously, Brady has one more year on his contract with Tampa Bay. It looks like Drew's out the door. And then Matt Ryan is looking like they're going to be drafting a quarterback this year. So if you enter Deshaun, I mean, I think six and 10 without Deshaun and McCaffrey didn't play, you get McCaffrey healthy and Deshaun. Maybe that's a good yeah, one. Carol, Carol, the Panthers are, are a pesky football team. They're perky. I like them. If you, they can probably, you know, package maybe, you know, Tay Bridgewater have to go and couple picks, maybe one of their receivers, maybe a Curtis Samuel, maybe a DJ Moore. I wouldn't trade DJ Moore. He's the best one on there. But yeah, something. Something that could work for the I mean, I'll consider it if you're Houston. Because Teddy Bridgewater, he is a good quarterback to hold you for a bit. Just like you said about Jared Goff, he can hold you for yeah, a little bit. he's definitely a great bridge quarterback. I love Teddy Bridgewater. I think he's a gamer, so absolutely. But man, let's let's get into this game. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Kansas City Chiefs. Justin, how did we get here? What are the matchups? Let's go. All right. Well, the Chiefs are a three-point favorite heading into Sunday. Chiefs beat Cleveland in the divisional round 22-17 to get here, and then they beat Buffalo in the conference championship 38-24. Bucks won three straight road games to get to this point, being the football team in the wild card round 31-23. The Saints in the divisional round 20 20- 30 to 20, and then the Packers in the conference championship 31 to 26. These teams also played in week 12. Kansas City won that game 27 24. Tyreek Hill absolutely went insane in that game 13 receptions, 269 yards, three touchdowns. Early in the first quarter, he caught 75 yard touchdown. Kelsey in that game had eight catches for um, 82 yards, and the Chiefs posted their third best DVOA pass before passing performance in that game. Mahomes was 37 for 49, 460 yards, three touchdowns. The Chiefs were really beating them up. They had no answer for Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey when they ran man. When they ran man, Tyreek Hill just ran past Carlton Davis and 
if they were running zone pretty much, they were just getting the Travis Kelsey. So I think the Chiefs have a Chiefs have a, have a good matchup on offense against Tampa Bay's defense, but you know, Tampa Bay they're a good offensive team too. I mean, both of these teams, they're offensive DVOAs. Chiefs are third, Bucks are second. For the Bucks to win this game, they're going to need to run the ball, get the play action going. Then once they get the play action going, they can start motioning and shifting and get into some of those run looks and then play action off of that and passing and, you know, shifting to get the get the cover, get the um look of the defense so Tom Brady knows what he knows what he's looking at. But I think the Chiefs end up winning this game. They're just they're just too powerful. I want to, I want to go back with the Buck because last week, and I said at the end because we both picked Green Bay, and I said we both picked Green Bay, which means Tampa Bay's going to win. Mm-hmm. And Tampa Bay won in Lambeau. We were both shocked. They went down the field, got the ball for a score, all that. But that second half, and we're talking about Tampa Bay's offense. That second half, they looked terrible. Tom Brady had three interceptions in that second half and green bay had the chance to win that game but they couldn't they had six points off three picks so do you think it's going to be that first half tampa bay offense that shows up or is it going to be that second half against green bay tampa bay offense that shows up? because if tom brady throws three picks again they're going to lose by 40 i think tom brady's going to throw a pick or two but i don't think the game's going to look like that for I don't think the Bucks' offense is going to look like the fourth quarter of that Green Bay game. I think it's going to look more like the first three quarters of that game where they were running the ball and then they were shifting. They were shifting. Um, Chris, Godwin da- Chris Godwin down to get looks, to get, look, to get looks of what the defense is doing, and then they will play action off of that and slip, you know, either Godwin or Cameron break up on, on a little double combo route, and he was open, and that was all because the running game was working. The Chiefs run run defense dvoa is 31st in the league so i think that's their pathway to winning but like i said in that first game it was just a total mismatch the um tampa bay buccaneers like to blitz a lot and mahomes just when mahomes have the blitz it's just it, it can get ugly he can carve you up when you're blitzing he can carve you up when you're in zone so i think that tampa bay is going to have to sit in the zone try to get pre- try to get pressure with the front four because chiefs are missing their um two starting um tackles Mitchell Schwartz was already out, but um, Eric Fisher, the left tackle, he got injured in the AFC Championship game at Achilles. So you got two back up there. So their their key to winning is getting pressure with four, but Mahomes can really handle the pressure. So yeah, that that's going that's going to be the, what I'm going to be looking in the game. How Kansas City's offensive line is going to protect their protect um, Patrick Mahomes? Isn't uh, Kansas City's defensive corner yes, he Steve is. Spagnola? The same defensive coordinator yes. who beat Brady twice. He beat him once. I don't. I don't know if he was still the coordinator for the Giants the second time. But yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I, that's the matchup I'm really looking at the Bucks offense because I really feel like Kansas City, even with Todd Bowles as a defensive coordinator over there at Tampa Bay, I, I don't think they could stop him. Like the way that Tyree can get loose, Travis Kelsey, Hilaire. I mean. All those weapons, I just, it's going to be a shootout, like you said. But the Chiefs are a team where if you think you're in a shootout with them, you look at the score and you're down 24. Like they're, they're so explosive. But I want to talk more about what everyone's saying baby goat versus big goat. Is Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes matchup in a Super Bowl, which we never thought we'd see, obviously, because Brady was. New England and since he went to the NFC and we have this a lot of people have compared this to if LeBron and uh MJ played in an NBA finals Justin to you what do you think the significance of this game is a Tom Brady versus Patrick if Patrick beats Tom and wins a second straight Super Bowl are we looking at a guy who potentially if things stay right catch Tom Brady and rings and really make it a debate in good conscience, ever say that anyone's going to any one quarterback can surpass Tom Brady at this point? I mean, this man is just—he's in his tenth Super Bowl. <laughs> he's in his tenth yeah. Super Bowl. He averages almost going to the Super Bowl every other year. It's definitely going to cement 
Patrick Mahomes is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time already. If he does win the Super Bowl, I mean, two straight. I mean, it hasn't been done since, well, you know, Tom Brady. So, yeah, you know, a lot like the two two um, Super Bowl quarterback club is a very exclusive club. So I think it's more um, I think it's more defining for Patrick Mahomes that he wins. If Tom Brady wins, I mean, it just shoots him up over the moon. I mean, we're talking about MJ's type of stuff. If he gets seven Super Bowls. But yeah, I, th- I think it will. I think it will mean more for. I think it means more for Tom Brady because, you know, he's a little older. He has the Bill Belichick thing. Yeah. If he if he does win this while Bill Belichick, I mean, he won that divorce. I mean, he won it. So, yeah, it definitely means more for Tom Brady. But if Patrick Mahomes does win, win this, it's cementing him as one of the belts as well. Yeah, because when Brady, when he checked in for Drew Bledsoe, and they won three out of those four. But remember, there is a 10-year gap. From 04 to 14 from their next Super Bowl. And obviously he didn't get hurt, things like that. They were still in contention. It's just, you know, it's kind of hard winning all the time. We have Peyton Manning and Ben it's Roethlisberger tough, and it's things tough. like that. <laughs> it, it's tough. But if the <laughs> the Chiefs were one offside penalty away for this being their third straight Super Bowl. One penalty. And this would have been the third straight. And I think they would have destroyed the Rams because that Rams team was Obviously, we saw what the Patriots did to him. So, and you just said it. If Patrick comes in, and this is his third full year starting, he wins two Super Bowls, and typically it's the quarterback who wins Super Bowl MVP, sometimes not, but that already give him two. In his three years of starting, he would have more Super Bowl appearances than Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers. In his first three years starting, that is mind-boggling. Yeah, man, the kid's special. He is special. I mean, it did help they has Andy Reid and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. But then, you know, the flip side of that, Andy Reid in the 2000s, he won three straight conference championships, actually four straight. And, you know, he didn't he couldn't win the big one. He couldn't win a big one until he got Patrick Mahomes. So, yeah, this puts him in. If he wins the Super Bowl, it puts him in that class. You got you got to talk about him with the Aikmans, with the Braves, with the Joe Montanas, with the. John Elway's like he is he is in that class if he becomes a two time Super Bowl champion. He just will be. Yeah. It, it it's crazy because he's twenty five, if that. Yeah, twenty five and he's in his second Super Bowl back to back. And you brought up the weapons and things like that, and people bring those weapons up all the time. And my only argument to that is that there's no player in especially in the NFL who hasn't won a Super Bowl with a terrible coach or a terrible team. Like there's always like even the 2000 Ravens that defense is legendary. That's why Ray Lewis won the Bowl MVP, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. So, I mean, you got to have the weapons to win. If you don't have weapons and you don't have coaching. You're not going to win a Super Bowl. They come hand in hand. Obviously, if Brady wins the Super Bowl this year, that'd be his first Super Bowl without Bill Belichick. But he also had Evans, Godwin. It, to me, it's just showing that Patriots had no offensive weapon. Because Brady can still go. They needed offensive weapons. And Bill Belichick, as great as he is, when it comes to, you brought this up months ago, when it comes to drafting wide receivers, he is terrible. He can't do it. He can't do it. Their only, um, their only, their only offensive pro bowler was Gronk that he drafted. Over that over that stretch, he was on the <laughs> who is on <laughs> the Buccaneers. So before we get your final score and then we start talking about the bet, I want to give you everyone else's scores from the L7C. Anyone who's done podcasts with us and our top two fans. So Byron has thirty twenty one Chiefs. Cedric has 35-31, Chief. Mitchell has 41-33, Tampa Bay. (laughs) Chuck has 31-27, Chiefs. Evan has 31-27, Tampa Bay. Chelsea has 31-28, Chiefs. Jacob has Kansas City, but he said the real winner is obviously CBS because that money is going to be coming in. Thank you, Jacob, for that one. Uh, <laughs> Fan wise, Patrick had 35, 33 bucks. Nikki had 
35-24 Chief. And the only two to give their scores left are you and me. So I will go first because you need to go last since you're the football expert. Tampa Bay is at home. If you've listened to any of these football podcasts, you know I hate the Buccaneers. Just because we they were early Super Bowl things, and then they became trash. But now they're in the Super Bowl, so they're filling that. Three straight road wins to get a home football game in the Super Bowl has never been done before. Tom Brady's going for seven. Uh, Bruce Arians, this would be his first, first as, as a head coach, coach right? First as a head coach. Yeah, they're going to have the fans. Um, not that many, but that Green Bay game, I felt like it was a full stadium with not a full stadium. But I can't. I can't pick the Bucks just because I've gone against them all year. I got to be consistent. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going the Kansas City Chiefs. I think that Patrick Mahomes and them are going to get their second straight Super Bowl, and then we're really going to have to start talking about where this guy's going to be falling. Because in my lifetime of watching football, the only people with is Manning, Manning, Roethlisberger, Brady from my immediate football watching are the only quarterbacks who have more than two Super Bowl rings. Check me if I'm forgetting someone. And I'm not talking about Staubach and all them. This current 2000 onward. And I think Patrick joins them. And I think they are going to come ready to play. I'm going 35-28 Kansas City. Okay. I like your pick. I'm also going Kansas City. I like them to win. 38-34. 38-34. I just think they're I just think they're too explosive. It can't it might rain, but the um rain forecast has it rain in the in the AM and then by game time it should stop. So I don't think weather's gonna play a factor. I just think Kansas City is too explosive. They didn't have an answer for Tyreek Hill. They didn't have an answer for Travis Kelsey in the first game. And I, I don't think they're gonna have an answer now. I know Kansas tackles aren't playing, but Mahomes handles the pressure so well. He watched the first game. He was getting, he was, the, the Bucks were getting pressure on him. He was just, you know, just backing up, backing up, and, you know, letting it rip. And it was their third best pass performance of the season, DVOA wise. So, yeah, I'm definitely going with the Kansas City Chiefs 38 34. 38 okay. 34. Okay. Oh, man. I really can't wait to watch this game. But, the Super Bowl is, I would say it's actually, I don't even know, 10% about the game and 90% about everything else, uh, from prop bets to the commercials to the halftime show. So, Justin, man, explain the so many bets that happened. Yeah, the, the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl is wild. So it is the second most wagered on sporting event besides the World Cup. And the World Cup only comes around every four years. So year in, year out, the Super Bowl is the most wager on event. I mean, last year, there was about $6 billion bet on on different props and things like that. And most of, most of these um, bets are, you know, prop bets. You know, you can bet on. I was looking earlier when I was typing the notes. Will the weekend mention Donald Trump in his um what you gonna call it in his performance? We mentioned Joe Biden. Oh, well, Jesus. just a whole bunch of stupid shit. What color will the Gatorade be? How long would the national anthem be? So yeah, there's a whole host of shit that you can bet on with the Super Bowl. Just a little, just a couple of Super Bowl stats. The um, Chiefs last year were a one and a half point favorite in the Super Bowl. They obviously covered that. They wouldn't. I bet on the 49ers last year, and they. Did me kind of dirty. Tom Brady is four and five against the spread in Super Bowls. He's two and one against the spread in his three most recent Super Bowls. And he is an underdog for this Super Bowl. Tom Brady is one and oh as an underdog in Super Bowls. His first Super Bowl, he was a 14 point dog against the Rams. So my bet here is I'm for the game. Chiefs minus three. I think they're going to cover that. And then I, I did get a little action at the um with the side bets. I got Levante David for the um, Buccaneers having the most tackles. And I think um, Shaq Barrett's going to be the first player in um, the game to um, get a sack. So those are the two prop bets that I'm betting on. I'm probably going to bet on a couple more. But yeah, Super Bowl is fun. Just 
bet on all these different props and drink and enjoy the game. <laughs> yeah, I was when I was driving for work today, I heard some of the prop bets on what gets mentioned first, Brady's age or that this is his temp Super Bowl. Who do they show first when the anthem sings? Brady or Mahomes? Uh, Super Bowl MVP, are you taking Brady or uh, Mahomes or the field? Like, like, what's the coin toss going to be? What's going to be the first Literally commercial? Any and everything. Uh, any and everything. Now, you, is there going to be a malfunction mm-hmm. during the I saw the that one, too, on the, on, on the book. <laughs> and obviously, that's going back to... The, another <laughs> another Patriots Super... Chance. I mean, another Tom Brady Super Bowl. He's in the Super Bowl so much. Mm-hmm. All the greatest moments of probably our life at the Super Bowl is going to probably involve Tom Brady, at least up until now. Yeah, which there's just so much. And I'm just sitting there like, wow. And then you broke down the numbers about how much money gets bet on these uh, Super Bowls. Shoot, even this morning at the office, one of these guys was talking about he knows a guy who puts 3000 every Super Bowl. Game? Minimum, yeah, just on the game, and then bets on the yeah, side man. stuff. The gambling, I'm just like dream, literally any and everything. It's it's crazy, man. Like, what are you going to be doing for the Super Bowl? You just watching by yourself? You getting a small group together? I think it might be a small group of people. You know, we promote social distancing around here on the L7C. We're safe. So yeah, I think it's I think it's looking like it's gonna be a small group. But yeah, I'm excited. Might get some chicken wings for it. Might drink a little bit. Super Bowl. But I, but I will be focused on the game. I'm not. Yeah. I ain't gonna get too fucked up where I don't know what's going on because I've had I have made that mistake <laughs> in Super Bowls. I remember the um the last Super Bowl with Tom Brady. I was DJing. Yeah, I was DJing, and I fell asleep for the third quarter. I didn't wake up until Julian Ellerman caught the ball on the ground. I was like, whoa, what's going on? And then the game won the Super Bowl, and I was screaming when <laughs> Patriots won because I was like, "Go, go, 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 Brady!" That, uh, that anniversary was just day two. That was a great Super Bowl. I wish yeah. I remember most of the comeback, but I remember when James White caught caught the game winner. You know, it's crazy too because you brought up how Brady's been in some of the best moments. To me, that's not even my favorite one. I think mine was two years before that against the. Oh Adam. my god, that Super Bowl! Oh I was going nuts. Me, me and my roommate at the time, when when uh, Malcolm Butler picked that ball off, we were going absolutely crazy. My whole apartment exploded. We were like, exploded. go! Because oh. I didn't, because the way he broke on that ball and got it, I just said, oh my gosh. And obviously, it led to, why didn't you hand the ball off to Marshawn? And Seattle was looking for back-to-back Super Bowls, too, and uh, Steven, my brother, he was actually sharing a video where he came to one of my Super Bowl things four years ago and how there's so many people there. I was like, oh, well, I can't do that now. But Super Bowls, man, they're, they're a guaranteed party. If you're not a partier, that is a guaranteed party for you once a year. That's a holiday. Like, we honestly, like, I don't know what politics are doing, but they just need to make that day after the Super Bowl a national holiday. We don't have to go to work. Just. Like, I thought about we, that. Actually, we should make President's Day since that's the national holiday in February. We just move President's Day and make it the day after the Super Bowl every single day, after every single year. I think it should be because, I mean, no offense to the rest of the world, but mostly America gets ingratiated in the Super Bowl. So I think that'd be perfect to move it the day after or just have two. There's nothing wrong with having two. I mean, holidays in a month. But that's another thing, because I've on a side note, I've always thought that election day should be a holiday so people are off so they can vote. Not not this time. We'll we can talk about that on a different podcasts. We're talking about football. <laughs> <laughs> so you got you got the cheap I'd even ask, who do you have being Super Bowl MVP? Um, hmm. They probably gonna give it to Mahomes, but deep down in my heart, I wanna see Tyreek Hill get it. I don't know why. I think it's going to be so funny if Tyreek Hill is Super Bowl MVP. But, but on the record, Patrick Mahomes, going I, to go. Mahomes on the record. Yeah, because I, I don't even know if he really – I really thought I was going to go to the running game last year, but I went to Patrick. 
I'm going Travis. Travis Kelsey. If the Chiefs win, I'm going Travis. Because that <laughs> Travis Kelsey is one of the best offensive weapons in the league and has been one of the best for at least for some years now. He is amazing. Yeah, Pat, I mean, Travis Kelsey is special. Shout out to my fellow UC alum, but yeah, he is. He is special. He's going to end up being one of the greatest Titans of all time. I already got him top five, if you ask me. So he's definitely a top five all time. Ooh. Can't wait to hear that. All right. I even forgot to mention this before we go, because we were talking about the halftime show. And it's the weekend. And Justin, you were on to the weekend before anyone else. I'll never forget many, many years ago. Shoot, I well, think we were, were in high, high school, school. When you're like, hey, you need to listen. Yeah, you need to listen to this guy, The Weekend. And it was the Crew Love song with Drake. And I'm like, who is this thing? And you're like, this is The Weekend. He's going to be something. Fast forward, all the money, all the awards, halftime at the Super Bowl. Do you feel a little, a little proud? Because you, you were hit before feel a everyone proud. else. I'm not going to lie. I started listening to The Weekend way back in tw- 2011. A lot of, before he was mm-hmm. mainstream, he was still talking about all the crazy stuff. I'm wondering if he's going to play some of those songs at Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but yeah, I, this is so crazy how he went from, <laughs> you know, dropping mixtapes on live mixtapes, and now he's one of the biggest stars in the world. It is wild, and he's performing the Super Bowl. Congratulations to him, because it's that is special. That's definitely special. <laughs> yeah, man. I can't wait to see what he does. I really can't. But Justin, anything else, man, before we sign off? And this is the last football game of. Yeah, season. man, it's going to be I'm going to miss football until fall. But the NFL never stops giving us things. We're going to have, you know, free agency next month, the draft in April and then yeah. all the and then leading up to the fall. So football never stops. So I'm excited, but now I don't got nothing else to say right now. Well. You know, the usual thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. Obviously, this past week, we just hit 700 total plus plays. So that was really nice. We're on our way to 1K and the way it's going. If you guys keep supporting us, we'll be at 1K well before our year anniversary mark in August. So keep listening to everybody's stuff and watch the Super Bowl. uh, See what all of our people pick. Make your own picks. If you're following us on Twitter or on Facebook or Instagram, comment below with your picks. And yeah, Super Bowl, just sit back, relax, have some fun. And with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. See you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.